and welcome to the EEPROM 9 where we're at the next teardown, this time of an old voltmeter from the 1970s, which is digital, and I shall show you the beauty last of what makes this very special. Now, I have electrical safety tested this and it is fine, but some little bastard cut off the power cable. But thinking about it, um, well I managed to gain a VGA cable and power cable from the monitors that were like, put by the skip sometime today. I'm thinking of returning there later with some scissors and cutting off the other cable and putting it in here. Why the weird plug? What is wrong with a standard kettle plug? This really isn't going to be a high current device. Now this thing contains several outputs, bearing in mind this is from the 70s. You've got ground plane, a switch between floating and ground, fuck knows what that's about. Remote control, so this obviously allows you to control it remotely. Fuse, your weird power socket, for some unknown reason they chose that. And of course, your power switch about the only thing that seems to make sense on the back of this thing and that. And an analog output, this is a voltmeter. And a BCD output? Okay, I appreciate this is lab equipment, but exactly why does lab equipment this old need a computer interface on it? Bearing in mind it doesn't actually have a microprocessor inside it anywhere. On the front we have the volts range, which is up to 100 volts from 1 volts and time consistent sex. Maybe that's refresh rate. And then you have the input, normal mode, remote mode for remote control, and hold, which I'm not sure what that does, and I can find absolutely zero information on this on the internet. So, the first task is remove the back screws. when the screwdriver doesn't keep slipping out. These are all nice flathead screws, no evil screws or mixes of screws involve you to use different screwdrivers. The engineers are nice and someone has actually been inside this thing before. It's amazing what universities throw away. And this has no university markings on it whatsoever, so this might not have even belonged to the university. It might belong to an individual scientist or engineer, probably engineer rather than scientist because the science block probably definitely has its own scrap bin because I missed that bit of scientific equipment that just vanished. But then there they have a lot of interesting stuff there. So this just slides off most of the time you have to There we goes and we get our first look inside. And we're presenting with what with a box that's mostly empty. This cable uh, partially connects to this and the rest of it kind of goes to this circuit board which has a lovely LM316D ceramic gold plated chip. Fantastic chip! Haven't researched any data sheets for any of the chips on this. These lovely mechanical switches, which I just love these. These are beautiful. And you actually have your voltmeter itself. All the logic is in here, which is why this is special, why it's going to be separate. Your power transform, which only has one output, which goes into this. So all the power comes from this. And there's lots of different inputs into it for different windings for whatever reason. In fact, it's written on the transformer. 12 volt, 22 volts. I think some of these are actually outputs on this side. 45 milliamps. Uh, is that? Ah, that could be a colour code there. Green, GR, which I'm guessing would be green, 22 volts. G negative, brown, SO, well, I don't know what colour begins with SO. You've got big beefy power switch, your fuse holder, the voltage selectory thingy, my bob. 
and of course your power input and also completely different colours to what you usually get for your live and neutral. The red as far as I can make out is where your live would be or what should be the brown wire and your black is your neutral wire. That's as far as I can work it out. Otherwise I'm probably going to get it the wrong way around but it's AC so it won't make that big of a difference if any. And of course your green and yellow colour fuse wire so that should be brown, but electrical stands were different back then. And of course, your earth wire connects as it should to the metal case. So this is, uh, and I've already tested this for electrical safety and it's fine, because the power cord being cut off did get me a bit suspicious. Because generally it means we've cut it off and we don't want people to use it. Um, if it proves to be electrically safe, why not use it? Then we remove this because we remove, need to remove that connector to get the other unit out. It's a relatively easy device to dismantle actually. And if you ask me, a crime to throw this away. Mind you, if they hadn't, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least I found a good supplier, good Redley supplier. Skip that's used only for electronics waste. <laughs> what more could one ask for? There we go, off that comes. And the back panel, don't need to worry about the wiring. Fold it like that. The metal makes horrible screechy noises, which I'm not a big fan of them. And the majority of this is, parts of it are made in the US, parts of it are made in Germany, parts of it seem to be made in, oh, no, I'm getting confused with the other thing, because this has parts which are made in England, like the meter from the 60s thing. The other thing that I did at like 30 something. <laughs> 60 something second thing of that will just become parts right that's that now we turn it over and this is where we see the special thing about this it's got a pamplex display and a bit of plastic just broke off the red front cover great so we move this unit the main chassis of the unit power stuff on over there onto the bed and we get out this so we have well what is the most fantastic piece of engineering so we have our display which is some neon based display a bit like Nixie tubes Chips, oh god, I just tap to the lens, it's fine. Um, well, look to be driver chips for the display, that's made by Beckman. And seems to be some chip I've never noticed. All them are chips I've never noticed, but they will probably be display drivers. Seven seg, of course, and high voltage. Which is why you have your transformer, and these two are your power inputs of AC, which goes straight into a transformer secondary, and there's the primary. So that will step it back up. And you have, well, they're mostly 7.4 logic. With, of course, date codes from the 70s. Mid to... Mm, pardon. Mid 74 to 75, basically, this would have been built. Nice power caps. This is, this is like your power regulation part of the circuit. You've got some sort of power regulator, which is a... 744, oh wait, that's probably the date code, isn't it? A tip 29, uh, crystal osculator there, which is 5 megahertz. I like these old crystals, they actually state the megahertz clearly, not like modern ones. This data tech, da -da 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 part number, da -da -da -da, no voltage output shown on it. Uh, these which seem to be LM301s and an LM307 
That one seems to be made in 75. Transistor, uh, some sort of two different types of variable resistors. They're more LM chips. So yeah, the, this is pretty much your logic that drives it. The uh, detecting voltage. Detect. This is your logic that drives the voltage detection. This is your step up circuit for the display. And these will be your driver chips. Which conveniently, look at the traces, pretty much proves that they're driver chips. Duh, 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 duh. And these are soldered on, not plugged in. Interesting thing is, the person in the comms labs has two of these which are sadly broken. The nipples got broken off so the gas escaped. But are exactly like this. Or at least they're both like this. So there were more of these round up probably at some point or similar devices. And that looks like some kind of capacitor. But yeah, interesting bit of kit. Fascinating. Excellent finder. I love these obscure displays. These are bloody fantastic. It lives! I have also taken the liberty of measuring some voltages with this of the two batteries that I have laying around this room. And it's all good. I have myself a fantastic voltmeter for measuring voltage. Excellente! There are times when you need more than one voltage point measured. Combined with quite a few of my meters, useful bit of kit and keeping vintage plasma displays alive. Thanks for watching!